fight. Newbold Noise said he, he, there's never been anything like it. But he plays. Never, Newbold, never, absolutely. He's a nice guy. Yeah. People have said it was a virtuoso performance. And uh, everyone says that the questions were good and the president handled them beautifully. They were good questions. Yeah. A lot of them... Kel, Kel, I want you to go up to Otis Chandler and John Dewey and he asked great questions. Yes, sir. But a lot of them are talking about the way you handled the Hoover thing, and there's overall support of the way you handled the Hoover. Yeah, but I said, well, after all, you can't put the old man out, you know, and you kick him in the ass. That's right. And a lot of them are talking about the figures you used. Mm-hmm. You know, the 300 and the 50 and the less than before and so forth. Yeah, and incidentally, they hope they all notice that that 61, 62, 63 from Bobby Kennedy he was the Attorney General. They got that. They, they got that. Yeah. Uh, McKnight, uh, the next president. Yeah. Because thought it was from Charlotte. Yeah, yes. How was he? Excellent. Everyone who I've talked to, and I've talked to a great number here, uh, even Mark Buckwall thought it was great. Well, Buckwall, what Buckwall say? <laughs> he thought it was great. He said, uh, Buckwall said that, uh, you know, it was a great performance. Why'd you get a hold of uh, Bill Buckley and, and let it see what he well, thought? For him, I don't see him here. Uh, let me know if you find him and call me back, will you? Well, Herb's here too. Would you like? Yeah, to I want to talk to Herb. Yeah. Uh, he's down there now. Uh, have him call me back, and but you get a hold of uh, of uh, Buckley. Buckley, because I think it's interesting because he's a hardliner and see what Buckley thought, you know. Okay, I'll try and find him. Fine, fine. If, if, if I don't, I'll talk to you. <laughs> Dr. Lukash, please. Yes, sir. Is, is he coming over? Do you get me Mr. Uh, Klein, please? Yes, sir, and I have Mr. Hoover on the line. All right, I'll stay. Hello. Hello, Edgar, how are you? I can't tell you how grateful I am for the remarks you made last night. Oh, well, what the hell, I, uh, I, I always stick by my friends, you know that. You always have. Yeah. Uh, you certainly did it before, before a very effective audience, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, they're all badgering and so forth, but, uh, you know, they, they gave, gave me a setup question when this fellow said, uh, in view of the, uh, in view of the, the increasing attacks that Mr. Hoover is coming under, do you think he will now uh, resign? And I said, no, it's going to have exactly the opposite effect. I said, he hasn't even discussed resignation with me. And I said, uh, certainly when he's being under vicious and malicious attack, a man that's given 50 years of service, is, and he certainly is not going to. You know, I thought that gave it a good chance. But it's true. I mean, hell, I mean, I uh, uh, none of us are going, I won't even, uh, as I, frankly, if they'd ever put it to me, that I just say I wouldn't even consider it if I were in his place. Wonderful of you, Mr. President. And you did magnificent on all the other questions. Yeah. You weren't there, were you? No, I, I listened to it on the radio. Oh, you heard it, yeah, well. On radio, and it came over excellently. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you sounded more relaxed than you do on TV. Yeah, well, it was uh, more editors, so I could be a little bit... You, you, a few little jabs of humor that were very good, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, the main thing is, to, as I say, uh, let your friends uh, support you in this and that.
And all right, well, that's fine. I, I just met your, uh, I just gonna say Henry Kissinger just walked in and, and, uh, he disagrees. He says I shouldn't have defended you. <laughs> no, here he is. I'll let you say hello to him. Thank you so much. Hello? Hello, Doctor. Mr. Hoover? Well, uh, you know you have many admirers in this building. Well, I thought the President was magnificent last night. It, I just can't, worry, can't find words to express my appreciation for what he said. Well, anyone who's done your service to the country you should not be exposed to this sort of malicious attack. Oh, but you've been, and I am also. They, uh, they're just trying to bait anybody who's a member of the establishment. I, I think that the statement of the President last night and all the answers he made to some of them uh, were loaded questions were magnificent. Well, that's that's what I thought, and I I thought that it was it came out very very well. I thought it was excellent, and it's awful nice to have you tell me what you just said. Well, it's a privilege to have, to be able to work with you. Well, thank you so much, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Mr. President, yeah. I find that Julie is attending a wedding. We'll be back at the White House at 2 o'clock. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And now? Yes, please. Could you get Julie for me? Oh, see, sir. Oh, she isn't back yet? Uh, just a minute. Yeah. Oh. Julie's about five minutes away from uh, the resident church. She can call me. Yes. Yeah.
Haldeman, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Haldeman is in route home. I left worrying. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Mr. Haldeman. Yeah. Ready. Hello, Bob. Yes, sir. I wondered if uh, we got any reaction from the cabinet on those uh, glasses and things we sent to him. Yeah, we have. I didn't see anything. I was just curious. We have, and uh, I guess we haven't sent the notes into yet. Yeah, that's all right. I just want to be sure they got them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they did, and, and we've had, had yeah. Uh, yeah, they, notes from them. Those are there, yeah. It's about not much more we can do with them. So. Something they could do. I think that with the Rumsfeld theory is probably a pretty good one in regard to them anyway, but uh, I think some of them appreciate it anyway. Oh, sure they do. That's, you know, anything, they're, they're very appreciative of that kind of thing, but there's a real question if, whether they're appreciative or not, whether it does any good. But it does any good in terms of that other thing, right? Yeah. And that's it. That's okay. All right, fine. We're seeing them. We're going to see the tree on Tuesday. Huh? We're gonna, yeah, we'll see what we work out on that. It's whatever you want. Tuesday's fine. Tuesday or Wednesday. This would be a good week to get just the cats and dogs out of the way. Right. Don't you think? Yeah. And uh, and I think the idea, the my idea of just putting at a half hour each and it on the public schedule. Right. So that they are on there, you know, for a half hour each and they know. Yeah. And then, okay, and I'll get them and I'll run it right like clockwork. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Yes, please. The hold them, please. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I've been thinking a little more of your suggestion on McCloskey. I'm not so sure that having somebody like Jerry in the house doing it is the best idea, where they have to see him all the time and all that sort of thing. Why not Rogers? I mean, now, after all, he can talk on this subject. He's just been over there. Mm -hmm. And he and, uh, it's not political. You understand? It's not partisan. Rogers has got to step up to a couple of these things now, you know. Okay. And, uh, uh, isn't that what really is involved? Uh, yeah, probably so. Well, he, he, well, maybe he could hit him hard. That's, I guess, to your your new point. I know the cabinet officers were attacking if if he if he would do it, and maybe he would. Yeah, Rogers. And, well, then how about Laird? Laird might even be better as a former House member, and it's really defense is what what he's who he's hitting. Well, we'll try to see. Talk to Henry about it. Let's see if we can get maybe Laird. To, I'll have Laird in. Well, I want him to check first, too, but I think maybe maybe Laird ought to just, just crack him off, you know, hit him right between the eyeballs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Although, get Rogers down on that other thing. Well, it might be worth getting Rogers on this because it's, right. it's Rogers' ambassador that he's That's right. Taken Rogers' on. ambassador he's taken on. Rogers should defend his ambassador and attack McCloskey. Right. That's what I think. Okay. okay. Buchanan. Thank you, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, you predicted the questions pretty good. <laughs> yeah, they went. Uh, they were uh, actually they uh, just as I thought though, uh, and that whole fifty-five minutes about seventy percent were directly or indirectly on foreign policy. Right. And uh, only about uh, well, the kid, the question about kids and the question about uh, the economy were the only two that really were related. Uh, uh, see, the Hoover question basically is foreign policy. It's, it's national security, and that's right. Right. Of course, so Hoover was pleased. He called me this morning. Oh, he must have been. I heard the thing on radio. He really came over well. He was, uh, of course, just a... <laughs> well, of course, uh, you had to defend him. Hell, yeah, you, you did a good you job. You can't run the old man out of town. Uh, that's right. Way, and uh, they've got to know that. that uh, the more they attack him, the more he's going to dig in. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, everybody understands that, I think. I think they do. I think, yeah. and coming to his defense personally, you know, and this guy's done all this, I think that's great, really. And, uh, well, he doesn't have the public support among many people, Pat, that people that are his enemies are never going to be my friends. That's for sure. Don't you think so? I agree. I agree. You know, I was just talking to Mort. It's an interesting thing. They all talk about, uh, this is the point you just made, they all talk about reordering priorities, we've got to worry domestically, but he said, too, all your questions are foreign policy. You didn't have one on revenue sharing. No, you didn't no. have one on reorganization. You didn't have no. one on welfare. You didn't have one on Negroes. That's right. That's right. They all one. say, well, we are, our main yeah. concerns are here at home, but they yeah. got the press conference they didn't, and all they ask you for impulse. And they didn't have one on the, on the environment. No. Not one. And uh, we, we had, uh, we were prepared in all those damn fields. They didn't have one stinking question. That's right. So uh, I think that uh, somebody ought to get that in the column. How did you, yeah, right.
Right. How did you feel about that uh, hour hour long thing? I thought it uh, gave an opportunity to go into more. You know. Well, it, you know? it was good for editors. Yeah. Uh, basically, there and the questions were the questions really that editors would ask. I mean, they weren't ones. You can't answer a question of what the hell do you think of at 3 o'clock in the morning. What I was almost ready to say is I think of going to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> that would have really caught the show. <laughs> right there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you might, you, you might, uh, you might uh, uh, leak that out to somebody. That okay, I will. Say. But, it's a, but what first came to his mind, he didn't yeah. quite say what I first think about. What I first think about is going to the bathroom. <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, a question like that, and what do you think about China, and what about the future of our children, and what do you think about uh, all those things? Right? You, you can't answer those in 30 seconds. Really. Yeah, that's right. You, you, you might, if, and also another thing, in this kind of a format, where you've got, the, where you've got 300 press men, uh, you can flip off an answer, you can, you can dig one, you can hit them. But with editors, I think you have to be very active if every question is momentous and important because they're in front of their colleagues and you don't want them back. Yeah. Don't you agree? That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a pretty good format. It was a format for them. I mean, yeah. for well, it was, uh, at first I was apprehensive about the radio, being yeah. on radio because uh, yeah. the immediacy, necessity for immediacy the response, but the delays and the answers that you gave, they really came off well and it could start to laugh and also the applause at the end of each answer really came over well. You know? Yeah. The radio builds it up. Yeah, oh yeah, it builds up the, the suspense. And now, uh, really when, when I asked that one question, you delayed and you said, wait a minute, there's six other guys on the panel, you yeah. know? Yeah. And that came off very well, and you get the sort of the yells in the background. It was very good radio, really. It was, uh, Chris, how'd you, how'd you like my answer on Agnew when I said, you looking for an editor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Because he's, uh, uh, it's the only way you can handle him, too. I've got to just sort of, sort of finesse it rather than to, rather than to, to uh, to come and do, do, do labored defense of him on everything, right. you know. Right. Uh, they all know that, uh, I mean, uh, that, uh, that, that I'm not going to disagree with him. Right. And uh, so he, he had no reason to feel, feel hurt of it, I think. No, I think it's a pretty good for, format. It's a, and yeah. it, it actually makes a, it makes, I think it makes a good radio program, actually. Yeah. Oh, it sure does. I mean, I was driving down the car and I had to pick up a lot of and right upstairs and cut it on. And, uh, it was really something. Yeah. A lot of people look at you on the radio. Well, at least the boys did a good job in preparing them. Oh. Okay, thanks. Yeah, okay, thanks, sir. Yes, please. You can, please. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. The other thing I was going to mention, uh, I forgot to mention, is <laughs> how uh, really amusing it is that these does are so... Or, so thrown off balance for this China thing. They're really, yeah. they're, they're really in a titter. In a, in a, oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, they, uh, uh, a little old blip like that, you know, and, and then they're all, they, they, uh, they really don't know what to do. That That's one they can't, don't know how to handle, isn't it? That's right, that's right. For and, sure. Well, they're ecstatic over the initiative, and of course, that uh, they just, I mean, very euphoric about the whole thing, and at the same time, they're going to have to sort of give you credit for doing it. Presents them with a bit of a problem. Yeah, because nobody else did it. That's right. That's right. And they, and also, it was good that Deadman asked the question because mm -hmm. it allowed me to point out that I had said it two years ago, said it in an editorial conference, referred to it in an article in Foreign Affairs. It was not something that just. And at the same time, of course, I, as you know, dodged the issue of recognition or right. the UN, which right. is very important. Say we're not going to go too fast here, boys. Yeah, as, uh, as we've got other friends there too. We don't want to let down Taiwan and uh, too hard, <laughs> right? And we won't. But uh, I just I think that they're. Uh, I think what really is interesting on the China thing is the way that it forces the the uh, liberal press people to get off of Vietnam for a while, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It does. We wiped it right off the front pages, you know, at least for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see what they do next week with it. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, please. Give me the usher's office, please. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Mr. Pierce is on, Mr. President. Oh, yeah. Ready? Oh, yes, Mr. Mr. Pierce, I was trying to get a hold of uh, the, uh, who was who the uh, aide, the, the military aide? Is the naval aide on today? Or? Uh, uh, sir, I haven't uh, seen either one of them today. Well, that's right. I, I'll check. Place. But I can uh, I can have him uh, try and contact don't, don't, him. Don't don't worry right now because I've got another. I think I've got another place I can call. Thank you. All right, sir. You're welcome. Operator. Kissinger, please. Operator. 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 Operator.
on the phone with? Yeah. Get me him? Uh, get uh, uh, Steve Bull for me, please. Okay. Yeah. Steve Bull, sir. Steve, I want to do... Uh, <clears throat> I spoke to the commander last night. Uh, what's his name, the new commander? Uh, Craig Campbell. What? Craig Campbell. Campbell. Anyway, I spoke to him about Fraser. And I wanted to, Fraser brought up to the yellow over room, and then I also, which I already told him, and I want him also in the picture, but I will not have him in the receiving line, just the, I want just Haley and myself in the receiving line. All right, there you Yeah, yeah, but I want to be sure that Fraser's brought up any, that he gets in the picture, because everybody will want a picture, and I'd rather have them take it while we're standing there than to come in and take it while we're in the receiving line. All right, there you go. Fine. Holloman, please. Thank you, sir. Doctor. Yeah. Mr. Holloman, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, hi, Bob. Hi. You know, I was uh, very amused by that. Uh, did you see the front page of the post about the poll they'd taken? Yeah. 300 people or something? Well, in the district, but no. Yeah. The point that I make is uh, uh, I'd leave out, and I think you have. Uh, I don't know. Did they run? Did we run our poll today? We released it. Uh, yeah. ORC released it, yeah. Yeah, they released it fine. What did we release? We didn't release on demonstrations, did we? I think we did. It's too bad. What I'd rather do is to suck a few of these uh, left-wing congressmen into the... Well, the Post probably didn't run our... Well, I haven't yet. seen ours run. I haven't been all the way through the paper, but... Yeah, yeah, it may not be. We well, ran. But our demonstration thing ran, what, 65, wasn't it, or something? 65 against him. Or something like that. But in any event... You see, this is a, this is by reporters calling. Oh, I'll tell you what a phony that is. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, of course, in the district, it would be much higher than anyplace else. Or they claim they did it in the affluent suburbs. But... Well, and it would be higher there, actually. Yeah. You know, you're running into that kind of stuff. But it wouldn't well, be as high as they got it. it well, no, Bob, there's a hell of a lot of Jews in the district, see. Yeah. See, the Gentiles have moved out. Yeah. And uh, I, I'd say with if they're affluent suburbs, it would tend to be half of a Jewish and, you know, it's really yeah. loaded. Yeah. But nevertheless, nevertheless, my view is uh, it's a good thing to let the congressman get a little worried about it. Do you think so? Well, <laughs> in any event, they'll see that at both, above ours because they give it, of course, a front page play. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got a lot of congressmen out on, on the demonstration anyway. Yeah. There's an awful lot of them that have they've got, I mean, not a lot, but they've got more than they usually get. Yeah. And they've got musky and, you know, some of the, he candidate types. And right, right. Never. Well, fine, then it's just as well probably to let ours go, but I'd uh, I'd be sure ours is written. I just wanted to, I guess maybe now it's just as well to let it ride. And, um, so if you... The main point on ours was to get it out so we could get it to our people on, yeah. the, on the support of the war. That's right, that's right. Well, yeah, that's what well we got that around, and, and, and anyway, so that our people we don't... We have left the demonstration thing out. And so that we, and, and maybe you're right, too, you don't want to have our people, I mean, even though the Kennedy's coming, we don't want to have Republicans get the idea, well, everybody's supporting demonstrations here. Right. And uh, that's probably a good idea. Probably a good idea. Okay, well, I'd certainly get ours on demonstrations to the, to our... Our friends. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, I think even if it wasn't by uh, you better put out a little separate one and let the let the post have a that'll that'll be a hell of a good thing for <clears throat> ORC to release probably about Thursday anyway. Mm hmm If they didn't release it this time. What do you think? Yeah. I think it would be. That'll sort of shake these people. Thursday or Friday you want to get them. What is our the intelligence is still flimsy on the demonstrations, is it? Yeah. The uh the, no evidence of any important radical involvement in uh the radicals are not in. I thought they were. Well they're 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 in it that some of the radical leadership is, but there's no no evidence of any yeah. uh right. you know, backup. Right. right. And the the where where it, the where there's a chance of that really is more in the apparently more in the May first to fifth. I see. Period. Then, then in the the big one's the twenty fourth, isn't it? Twenty fourth is mm -hmm. the big mm -hmm. March deal, and they're not how are they doing? How are they getting the college and universities? Are they well, up? they're they're trying to use uh, high school high schools. Well, that might be a recruiting work. thing, which may work. It may work. You get a lot of kids that way. Well, you remember high schools? Uh, well, they'll do. You remember how the high school kids all go to Balboa, and yeah, they might. This might be their kick to come to Washington. Well, but that's the way to play it down. 
too. I mean, if it turns out to be a lot of high school kids, it's it's not going to have as much significance. Mm-hmm. And we can make the point that it's just a spring vacation outing for yeah for them instead of a high school kids aren't as likely to get rough, are they? Oh, I don't know. They still they use pot too. So they, well, I see. The I roughness see. pretty much gets related to the drugs. They get yeah. doped up, you know. And they they get doped up, then they bust the windows. That's when they cut loose. I want them to break those windows up at the Capitol. That's, yeah. That's the best thing that can happen to those congressmen because the way the Washington Post is, uh, well, has really completely submerged the, the, uh, you know, the damage done in these demonstrations. Yeah. Oh my God, this would, this would really shock them, wouldn't it? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, there's apparently no, no interest in this thing in uh, doing much at the White House. The veterans are going to come and leave their medals at the White House or something, but that's about the only... All the marches are going to be you know, down down to the Capitol rather than by the White House, and there seems to be no <laughs> no focus here. Fine. Right. Right. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I can't... I, I can't believe that they can have that damn much steam in it, you know, at this point. That's all there is. Just, uh, well, they're not. Except it's the, except it's the night. It'll be a nice time of year. They're, they're at a damn good time of year. Yeah. That's one thing. But it's, you know, it may catch hold, but there's sure no, like the, before, there were enormous buildups. There's a lot of activity, a lot of chartered buses and all that. Now there's, they've got one train chartered from, from, New York or someplace and, and 10 or 15 buses from New England, but that's, you know, that's maybe a thousand, two thousand people. I see. That isn't going to accomplish anything. There was a lot more than, than that before. Oh yeah, there were hundreds. Mm-hmm. Now there may be, you know, maybe they've got mm-hmm. something else going, but, the, and maybe there'll be more when, oh yeah, well, we got this weekend. I'm not going to worry about it. It's just be, um, I still think people are going to be turned off by them. Because they'll do some something. Don't don't worry. There'll be enough roughness. Uh, it usually is. They get you know it's just the usual rock concert. And also they look bad. They they're gonna look bad too. Yeah. Oh yeah. They put them on TV. The press will put them on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of press, what did they? How did they handle the the the, uh, the uh, press thing on the news? You know, last night. Oh yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen the news summary yet. I, I haven't. I haven't seen it. Yeah. I don't know. I just wonder what they ran. I, I imagine they had quite a bit on the radio because they had that having done it. There were huge chunks on the radio all day. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. That's a good way to. I think you know that turned out extremely well from a standpoint of of using the radio. You know, because at first, as Sigler says, everybody calls it a press conference, and second, yeah. and second, uh, the radio uh, deal. Uh, I mean, who? So in other words, it doesn't have the impact on the on the nation because you're not seeing the TV thing. But we've uh, we've had a press conference now. You do something else. And now we're now we're all set to do a TV one without having overloaded it, right? Very good. Don't you agree that that's a with this radio thing was because uh, that we can do that if we ever do anything in the office again. We'll certainly have it on the radio. Yeah. Well, I sure think so. Yeah. That's worth doing. All right. Thanks, Bob. Right. Thank
have a faith that the orders have got to go out there that I want Abrams and Bunker to pipe down. I mean, I told, I mostly I just, got to, I just got to say, I mean, uh, the, the thing is that this is the, what the press is try, trying to do is that they want a story. It doesn't make any difference what he does. I don't care if he goes in and bombs the hell out of him, but don't say it. See, they, they see the press fronts to put Vietnam back on the front page. Now, they use this one little story. God damn it, then two, two papers to the front page, right? That's right. I talked to Laird about it. Uh, and Does he I, understand it? Oh, yeah. And he's getting, he, he said he'd get right on the phone with Abram. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when we wanted him to talk, he didn't. And now. Well, he didn't. As I he said, didn't he really suck it into it. Sucked into it. Some goddamn newspaper guy wanted to get a story to the effect that we were going back in Los Angeles. The news guys out there dying because the uh, right. Laos is over and the uh, and the South Vietnamese held the hill and now they're moving around and they're having their award ceremony and I I think they're just trying to suck poor old Abrams into a into a so but he just he just feels so compelled to be so goddamn honest all the time I he just shut up that's right okay. just as well I'm not I'm just he should just say Jesus Christ to uh, do what I say don't comment on that sort of stuff exactly. dodge it. That's what I told Laird. I said, there's no law against saying no comment. That's right. That's right. And or not, I don't speculate on operations That's or right. anything like that. Instead of if you say that, I don't rule it out, then they, then they get through writing it their back end. Yeah. Well, although uh, I, uh, if one reads the actual stories, they're not written in a particularly inflammatory way. Well, yes, but most don't, Henry. Most of them will see the little blip on television. General Abram says we may go back into Laos. You see, that's what, that's what we, it, you, you must understand that it doesn't make any difference what the actual stories say. It's what, what hits in that minute that people see on television. Oh, you're absolutely right. And, uh, the minute they see on television, well, General Abram says we may go back into Laos. And everybody that was, begin to calm down over Laos, they get all stirred up about it again. Yeah. I don't ever mind people getting stirred up if we're going to do something, you know. That's right. But God damn it, I don't want to do it when we decide he's had his shot. Now, this is a time uh, when uh, the military gains on that impo are not going to be that crucial. There aren't any more left to play, as he damn well knows. I mean, he had his shot, and he's not going to get any more. We can do these harassing acts. Oh, Christ, I know, but... This is nothing compared to the others. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They, um, and he just and he can't continue to talk about. It. Well, well, I think he'll get the point because they had, uh, well, they'll do it on this one. But uh, kind of get. I hope that they can uh, now tell Ziegler if he gets any comment on that. Just, just, just not to say anything. I don't know. He can't say no comment. If he does, it'll build up the Abram story. But he's got to. He simply says that uh, there are no plans for any. Many, many things. That's. I mean, now don't get the impression that by even saying a silly thing like this, that that's going to hold down the North Vietnamese. It isn't. Not no, one no, of them. Well, there's no way planned, Mr. President. I know, I know. But my point is, with Ziegler, then he should just say there are no plans. That's right. Now, don't you agree? He should nail the thing down. And well, there is a. They are going to go over with with raids, but there are no plans of anything of that scale uh, before. Right. Well, then better say that. Right. And that's better. What I meant is that it's important to get across the idea that there are no, no, no large scale operations in Laos are planned, period. That's right. And, uh, because he's going across. You see, they only have two weeks left to do it anyway. Yeah, well, they've got a little more in that area to go to the south. But, uh, I think we should, I, I, I'll work something out along that line, Mr. President, and check it with you. Well, just get it down to, you don't have to check with me. You know what we're trying to get at here. Right. Mr. Just calm it all, just cool it down. What I mean is I don't want Ziggler to make another story out of it. Right. He must not make another story out of it. See, if he comments, he can say as little as he possibly can without making another story. Exactly. And uh, just uh, uh, don't, but remember that the whole purpose now is not to try to keep the North Vietnamese off balance. We got them off balance. I just the purpose now, by statements, the thing to do now is to 
is to keep our own people from getting stirred up about things we aren't going to do. That's right. See, that's, a, that's the difference. When we are going to do something, then we have to take pay the price of being stirred up anyway. But when we're not going to do something, we must not be forced to pay a price. That's what it really comes down to. And right. I'll get that. I'll call Ziegler immediately. Well, he's, he'll probably have a, have a query on it. And, well, I'll tell and, you. And I'd, I'd simply uh, tell him not to take any press calls today. Right. Tell the whole office not to take any. This is Sunday. Right. And uh, there's no press calls. And just say that, that uh, he can't be reached. Just leave it, uh, leave it a little bit dumb for a while. Maybe that's the best way to handle it. Now, or uh, he says, well, uh, and they'll wonder, well, I don't know that they will or will or not. Well, let me find out first whether it has made any waves. Yeah. And if it has, I'll get it down. But well, I, I'll tell you what you do. You better give Ziegler a call to the situation, and you better call me back, and we'll have to develop a thing. How's it And what about the what about the rest of the news? I haven't. I only seen that uh, that front page. How today? How's that kind of things being? Oh, very good. Very well. Very good. And I saw last night on television Martin Kagransky has a had a panel of newsmen. Yeah. Sidey and Kilpatrick and. Uh, yeah, his usual group. His usual group, and Sidey was just raving on about how oh, your great initiative, and even Carl Rowan uh, <laughs> had to say some grudgingly favorable thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd tell Patrick handle it. Oh, very favorable, strangely enough. He usually does anyway. Yeah. Oh, he was very favorable. Then they talked about Hoover, and there Kilpatrick was the only one who stood up for him. Oh, well, that's true, that's true, but that, but that doesn't they know damn well I have to stand up for it. No, no, that, that didn't touch you. No, that I mean, was a, they didn't attack you on that. Right, right. Did they use some of the news summary, uh, did they use some of the, on the newscast, the stuff from the night before? Or I didn't see frankly that. didn't see that. You were looking at other things. Right. Right. But uh, looking at the papers today, what are they, uh, what are they, uh, oh, no, they, they are, they are getting a lot of your stuff in the, uh, right. in the weeklies, uh, the balance was pretty good, is it? Very good. Yeah. Very, very good. I mean, all the viewer stuff is exceptionally good. In the in the weekly news summary, you mean? Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the China story is, of course, very big. Yeah. And very favorable to you. Everywhere. You know, the thing I feel, feel is this, that uh, you'll probably see you're bringing Tuesday, right? Or Monday, maybe Monday. Well, I'll see him. Uh, if he comes back, he'll come back either tonight or Wednesday night. Those are the only two flights right. they have this week. Sure. And it, it's just yeah. barely conceivable. It's probably Wednesday. That, that this China thing kept him back a few days for reassessment. Right. Fine. But what I was thinking, thinking either tomorrow or Tuesday. What I was thinking was this, and I don't know just well, quite how it will work. Uh, I would delay your meeting with Bogdan until after you see him. All right. You get, or have you already set it up? No, no. Let me tell you why. Um, after you see him, we may want to play a very, much, very different game. Let's suppose, for example, running it out. Let us suppose that we get a straight uh, cut off. You see what I mean? Right. Then uh, instead of diddling around with this sort of thing, uh, we might go immediately to the highest level. You see, you see what I'm getting at? Oh, yeah. And uh, I don't mean on the, uh, it just, just, and this time we, because we're going to have, we would have to play that kind of a game. And, and knowing the, the Asians, the way they operate, well, they will go like molasses and, on things of this sort. In a moment like this, they just might bite for the whole thing. You know what I mean? Right. Have a trick complete. And so rather than wasting anything with telling the, Showing lie that we'd like to have Mansfield and Scott received and the rest. Let's just wait. I think that's a good See, idea. Uh, now, he's our best contact, isn't he, uh, the Bogman? Uh, we'd have to think about that. Well, what I was thinking was, uh, are we sure then? Yeah. Yeah. What I was thinking of was, uh, I'm... How secure are, 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 are they in the lines? They always send a messenger. Yeah, okay. That's fine, and I was going to say that they'll send a messenger. That's good. And uh, they'll send a messenger to Bucharest, huh? Right. Well, that's good. I was going to say, but another, otherwise, we could send somebody to Bucharest. Well, another way of doing it is 
that when I go to talk to the North Vietnamese, I talk to the Chinese ambassador in Paris. Yeah, yeah. And get it set up that way. Yeah. Well, you see what I'm getting at. We're, we may as well play our little games or just forget what I told you to do about Bogdan right now, huh? Right, Mr. Perry. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't, I don't think it's going to play that way. I think that the Russians are... Oh, all, they're going to come. They're uh, going to come. But you know what I mean is that we now have got to play for... We're playing for very high stakes, and uh, we have very little time left, and we can't diddle around, you know, with the Russians or anybody else. Right. Yeah, okay. Right, Mr. Uh, President. Okay. Dr. Kitchen, Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, Hi, Henry. Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, Ziegler is out of town, and I've yeah. talked to Jerry Warren. Yeah. He hasn't had a single press question Good. yet. Don't. And the line I've tentatively established subject to your uh, yeah. approval is that he's talked, that he was talking about South Vietnamese capabilities, not any particular plan. That's right. And he was just Very good. talking about abstract capabilities. Yeah, hypo and, and hypothetical uh, things. And uh, not about any, and not about American activities. That's right. And if that's agreeable, that's what we're going to uh, stick with. Would you get, uh, I want, would you get Laird, to, Laird will probably be asked. No, I got word to defense already. How would Laird handle it then? Or I well, Laird it. would say, uh, same thing. Uh, essentially the same thing. They haven't had many queries either. Well, what this is, Henry, it's, a, it's the, it's the devilish press again, just trying to take one, a little old word and, and, and hypo this thing. They, I, of course, I think, Henry, basically it's pretty much a defensive thing on their part. They are really must be up the wall, don't you think so? Well, what what you feel? Here they've been going, saying everything that we're bringing the Chinese in that yeah. Laos would lead to a worsening of the situation. That's right. That's right. Uh, now they see that, it, that, that they got beaten back from Firebase 6, military activity is dropping again, just as we said it would. Yeah. And the China think breaks. They're just out of their mind. They really, don't you sense that in talking to them? Oh, yeah. Well, they're just completely confused. That's right. And they're off. Now, the way that line they'll probably take, it seems to me, is to come back at it in terms of saying, well, this is really just the Chinese people. I mean, this is the, that we'll get along with the American people and that sort of thing. But I don't think the Chicoms a government will play it that way. Oh, no. I think, they're, I think the Chicom government knows that the American people can't do one damn thing for them. They're playing for the big stakes, Mr. President. Don't you think so? And I've got two books full of initiatives we've taken, and if they press us, we'll just leak them all out. Yeah. Oh, sure. They try to say that, uh, that, that this all happened because of their initiative and so forth. But it's uh, really amusing to me, though, because it's, uh, while Mike is honorable, these other Democrats are not the way they're all pandering around and now trying to run over there to China and so forth. Yes, the problem is they never recommended any of this, Mr. President. They can say well, no. whatever they want. This is yours. And neither did the State Department either. That's so, right. I mean, we pushed them all. It, the State Department was sort of prying around with recognition. and That's, that's all. They were all talking about what was really what you call a tactical, abstract thing, which was really unfeasible. Uh, uh, I, I showed uh, Osborne that little note you sent me yeah. on February 1st, 69. Good. Good. And his mouth really dropped way open. Yeah. yeah. It's too bad that wasn't in my handwriting. It was, but they, they copy it off, apparently, at that yeah. time. Oh, well, it's off tape, usually. Well, I may have taped, no, I may have put it, yeah, I may have dictated it. Yeah. I may have dictated it on the tape. Yeah. That's right. But he, uh, but it came on with it, was it to, uh, to you from our end? Was that the way it was? No, it's that to uh, Kissinger from the president. Yeah. I see. Well, that's enough. Oh, <laughs> that, uh, they know this isn't the fact. He, know, he knows that, uh, Oh, no, he knows we yeah. wouldn't fake that. And it indicated that we ought to, what was that one? That was the first one. Well, it said, I want you to explore on a highly confidential basis uh, how we can improve our relations with communist China and above all, how we can establish reliable uh, private channels to them. Good. <laughs> good. I mean, it couldn't be more explicit. Yeah, Mr. President. good. He said, uh, I want, and you said, I want no publicity whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That must have really killed him. Oh, God, his mouth really dropped about yeah. six inches. Because I suppose that, you see, there, there's some of his mythology then is is knocked out, and when he writes something else, he's just has to feel he's dishonest. They know damn well that on February 1st, 69, no State Department had gotten... This is February 69, before the State Department ever even talked to me. That's right. Yeah. 
This was February 1st, 69. Which is basically 10 days after we were That's right. And uh, I think it's very interesting. No, I think on this one, sure, the Democrats are going to start yelling now. They're going to come up uh, with 50 hot gimmicks, but we are so far ahead of sure. them. What they're coming, what they'll come up with, Henry, is why don't we now admit them to the UN? Why don't we, uh, why don't we uh, uh, recognize and so forth? Uh, well, that's all premature. That, uh, and, and also, yeah, Mr. President, we don't want to let that be the debate. That helps us with the Russian game. I think so. Because if the Russians see that the Democrats are more hog wild vis a vis China than you are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hadn't thought of that, but it's then, true. Then they have much less of an incentive to bring them in. They already don't trust them on the Middle East. Then if China, they also yeah. turn out to be a disaster. True, true, true. So I think, uh, my major worry is that we'll, that if we, if we get too eager that the Chinese will start going back into a shell. And that's why the way you've played it, and I agree. that's where the I Democrats I don't, do damage. I sure as hell don't expect to get eager at all with the Chinese, oh, no, you unless, unless the Russian thing drops. Then then the Chinese may want to be eager, you know what I mean? Right. And, uh, and we will, too. If that's we can't just assume then, well, we'll wait till 1974. Oh, no. See, oh, God. No. Uh, this is one of those things where... But I don't believe, I think, I think our Chinese game, Henry, should be played exactly as it's being played, very cool and aloof, and uh, yet uh, the doors open, now you walk in, kids, and it's your move. Mr. President, I must tell you, honestly, I believe that we have a 30% chance, even if we play the Russian game, of having a high-level Chinese one next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that may not have to wait till 70. We want, when we want to use it. We want it at the highest level, too. That's what I mean. That's it's not at all excluded. Mean, let me say that the, 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 the more I think about it, the envoy thing, if we're going to go, I think we ought to go at the highest level. Right? Yes, I think the envoy could prepare for it. It might, but in other words, it might take a lot of the zip out of it, too. You know what I mean? It's, right. uh, you just can't tell, and I don't know if there's anybody we can trust to send over there. Right. Uh, we've... Uh,
it was he was there for the celebration that the South Vietnamese put on to celebrate their victory. Yeah. <laughs> well, and if that had been all that had happened, it would have been on page 32. That's right. That's right. But I think it's a one-day story. Yeah, true, true, true. Well, if the, if the senators will call and say, oh, well, we're going to pass a resolution, say, look, it's like Cambodia, it's moot, boys. Yeah, we're not going to... We, 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 you see, I don't want to be... Look as if the Senate forced us to do something that we were going to do anyway. That's what I'm concerned about. Exactly. Uh, see? And but I, I think uh, if nothing more happens now, we can have, we have it under control. Well... And uh, at any rate, it hasn't made it made any waves yet. Fine, fine. fine. And otherwise, uh, okay. Well, there's a curious thing going on in Europe, and we haven't figured it out yet. There are 320 Soviet helicopters have moved from East Germany into Poland, mm. and uh, we think it's an exercise, but it's still it's a funny exercise. that they should be moving east and into Poland. We, we don't know of any yeah. upheavals that are going on there that would justify it. I'll tell you one thing. I think all of Eastern Europe is seething. I really think it is. I think it's more than meets the eye and that I think everybody is sitting on a powder keg. Just, good God, that reception we had in Romania approved it. Well, that's why I think, Mr. Bear, they're worried that we are going to... Uh, uh, the Soviets have to break out forward or into a conciliatory stance. They can't do, they cannot stand pat. And my guess would be that they are not going to go into a tough one with her. You see, I interpret also the Chinese moves. They must have read the president's speech the way we do. And they must have read it as a beginning of a thaw in U.S.-Soviet relations. And they want not to be the victims of that. In other words, they're afraid of a condominium. Exactly, and so they want to get in on that before. Yeah. But otherwise, they could have waited a few months. Yeah. You know, right. I think their reading of the president's speech is like ours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in that world, they read all those things and read things into them. Oh, God, they read them in a way that we don't even know how to begin. Yeah. Well, anyway, we had an interesting singing group today, they're singing cadets from Texas A&M, 60 of them, you know, and, uh, because they're traveling through. Oh, yeah. And uh, I shook hands with them afterwards, and boy, it's rather heartening. These boys, some of them, several of them, of course, a few of them had served in Vietnam, but, well, I'd say about half of them have said, boy, we're behind you in your policy, we're all with you, and all that sort of thing. Well, I and, uh, and, when, and then David made an interesting observation. He said, you know, Texas A&M has a student body of 14,000, which is bigger than Harvard, Yale, and the three uh, Ivy League smaller schools combined. That's right. And he says, just, and they're a hell of a bunch of guys, and we've got to remember that when the, just as the East spews out these revolutionaries and radicals and bastards, that some of those schools in the West are spewing out bright guys that are pretty well, good. I think those bastards are also impressed by a man who's willing to stand alone. That well, sure, nice. and also they spew out some good ones, too. We know there's some awful lot of good kids in the Eastern schools, but you go out to places like A&M, by golly, there's a lot of guts in those oh, places. That's it. Those, those schools uh, in the Southwest are really marvelous. Right. right. But we need them. We need to, we need to keep that, uh, that sort of thing alive in this country. We must not disappoint them. Absolutely. And that's what your policy has been all about. Right. Well, sure. I try to have it. Well, this Abrams thing, of course, it isn't, it isn't all that serious, except that I can, I can always see what, goes through the minds of these doves and they will, they always try to seize on this and you watch, they'll have a speech tomorrow about it now. The administration is doing this or that and are we doing this and that and how, uh, uh, Laird's going to cool it with some sort of a statement. That's the best thing so that Ziegler doesn't, right. I think the best thing is for Ziegler to say nothing. Well, and, Ziegler, uh, not really, it's really, but I don't care whether Ziegler or Warren here to say nothing and just simply refer it to defense. Right. Why don't we do it that way? Let's keep it out of the White House, Henry. Okay. I think that's better. Because I tell you, if we do it at the White House level, you'd have it much bigger. Just refer, well, I'll have to refer you to the Defense Department. Then have Heimken say whatever it was you were going to have Ziegler say. How's that sound? Jim? That's even better. I think it's really better. Because that way, we should just act as if this is an important for no. White House attention. That's right. Well, this is a, not important enough. For just me. say this is a purely tactical 
uh, move. It's no, and, uh, and, I, and you'll have to go to the Defense Department for any statement. Fair enough? Good. I'll get that done immediately, yeah. Mr. President. How did the casualties look this week? I think they're again around uh, what they were last week. Even with the 10, huh? Yeah. We don't get the good count until Sunday night. But uh, well, if, if with the 10 we can keep them in that ballpark, that's pretty good. Because uh, they'll drop next week, in my opinion. Oh, yes. I think they'll be down around 30 within two weeks. Yeah, they may drop. You remember, we got down to 16 once, didn't we? That's right. There's, uh, these people are going to have trouble keeping them up. All right, thanks. Good night, Mr. President. Yeah. Um, Secretary Conley, he has left his residence, and his operator is trying to locate him through the car. So as soon as we locate him, can we have him call you? Uh, yes, it's not urgent, but when it's convenient. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, please. Mr. Colson, please. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Colson, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Hello, Chuck. Yes, sir. Well, how's everything on your front today? Well, I think things are going well. We're getting uh, a little bit going with Mr. McCloskey at the moment. Oh, are you working on that? Yes, sir. He, uh, he as you know, has made some pretty uh, serious charges. Uh, I think you saw Henry, or Henry sent you a memo. I don't know whether you've seen it. About Laos? Yes, sir. Ambassador and everything. But uh, serious but untrue. Oh, God. And he uh, went on Face the Nation today and argued that... Uh, Ambassador Godley had instituted a new policy that deliberately destroyed the villages. So we think that some of the uh, tougher House members will take him on this afternoon and tomorrow. Uh, which is the way to do it. We should stay out of it. I'd... Well, we should at the White House. But the White House, right. The, uh, I think Laird might, uh, might, might be well just to... Well, our state really should. Yes, sir. State, we state really ought to say, after all they've taken an ambassador on, uh, Roger should step up to that and just uh, hit it right in the nose. Well, we've uh, we've suggested that state do that. Uh, we got a hold of them this afternoon. And uh, what do they say? I haven't heard back, Mr. President. We asked uh, Haig to yeah to get to them and uh, <clears throat> also to have some of our tougher guys up on the hill uh, take him on tomorrow when they go into session and perhaps get a statement up this afternoon if we can. Yeah. I think he's going to, uh, personally, I think he's playing it a little bit too hard. Uh, yeah. And too early. Well, certainly too early. Uh, basically, uh, in terms of his situation, it's uh, he's in the wrong party. I mean, if he were, uh, you, you see, the if he were on the right, mm -hmm. he could be, uh, but, but uh, he isn't talking to a big enough audience. That's right. In the Republican Party, see, it's in the, in the Democratic Party, he'd be talking to a big audience. Well, it was interesting on Face the Nation. He said that uh, everywhere he went, he found the South Vietnamese were well equipped, well able to fight, uh, uh, every bit the equal of the uh, North Vietnamese. And uh, what he was really saying was that we, that, that your Vietnamization policy has succeeded, which uh, affects in some way the credibility of his next argument, which is we ought to get out. Yeah, with it, but uh, yeah, well, we mustn't allow his situation to to distort our whole campaign because uh, not at all. We, I mean by that, it has to be handled at levels where we don't escalate it. Mm -hmm. He must be hit, but not uh, not at too high a level. At the state level is just proper, and a couple of House members, but Ziegler should just stay out of it. He says he's just completely. He should just refer it to the fact. Well, I I, I think the State Department is. Respond to that. And that's what he should do tomorrow. He should not respond to it himself. No, exactly. And uh, he ought to do that more often anyway, so that we don't get into this thing like that with him. Well, you, you certainly don't want to dignify a guy like that. Yeah. Or elevate him any more than well, he's a little bit. I think he's a little off his, off his nut at this point. You know, he's, he's, he's very erratic. Yes, he is. He, uh, Always. You don't quite go this far. He is. It's a funny thing. Is that he and Regal and Fidel are just three of a kind, aren't they? Yes, they are. And it's, uh, it's so bad with the. Uh, with his, he's he's emotionally upset. I think. Yeah, and he's a he's basically uh, he's a fairly attractive, articulate fellow. It's a damn oh shame. yes, he is. Uh, it's a damn shame that he's gone off the deep end. Yeah. We uh, no, we, no, it's fine. we have your hard hats coming in tomorrow, Mr. President. Oh yeah, yeah, we have them to come in. The uh, Jim Hudson, who uh, uh, I've talked to this morning, said that he thinks they're going to be uh, 
he, he thinks it'll go fine. He thinks the attitudes are better. There's one or two in there that still aren't completely back on the team, but uh, the majority of them are. And we're one by one talking to them. Uh, you know, I think it'll be a good meeting. I don't think there's any risk that it'll uh, backfire on us. What is it? What will be the, 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 the sense of the meeting? I mean, are we just for our being or just to uh, well, discuss I've, the... I sent you in a briefing paper which suggests that you uh, hit them right at the beginning on the, the economic issues. Uh, yeah. After all, if, if they're going to really uh, participate fully in the, in the economic rebound that is obvious with housing starts up, which is a big thing to them, uh, they've got to get their own wage and price policy stabilized, and that's what we're trying to do. And the, yeah. the thing they object to is that being singled out. And I, well, they've singled themselves out of our sense. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's just what needs to be said. And they, uh, you, and they sure they're singled out. But they're well, I, I think what you can say is that you, you've had special problems, and we are really trying to help you with those problems. Right. Basically, they know that, most of them. Uh, and then if you can talk about the foreign affairs, they're still as hawkish as ever. Uh, and I think that... Uh, I, I think the meeting, I think it'll go well. I think it would have been bad not to have them because... Oh, no, I think we should have them. Yeah. They would have felt... Uh, well, we didn't. We had them before. We're going to have them now. We're not going to die away from it. Exactly. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I did talk to uh, Ed Brooke, as I indicated to you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And that's on the track. He's... Uh, yeah, well, he's... Uh, you know, let him go running off if he wants in months. But uh, we'll... Uh, there's a way to handle it. It keeps, keeps others a little loose, too. I think something's going on. Well, that's exactly right. They're not quite sure what's out well, there. They're, they're all a little loose now, the China thing, uh, and where it keeps them loose and so forth. That's right, exactly. And, uh, I, you, you I, think there's a, I think there's a little different sentiment up there, Mr. President. I think uh, Saxby coming back the way he did. Uh, that's a pretty good blow for us. Well, it sure is, and it makes a lot of fellows... Uh, Think well, I, actually, I think that when you sort of began with the, the March 7th speech, the April 7th speech, then exactly. the China thing, and I followed it up, of course, with the editor's Friday night. Which was very good. Laid it right to him, you know, you can't, uh, you can't leave, uh, leave, uh, were you there during the radio? I heard it on the radio, yeah. I suppose. Well, it's, uh, it was a good reaction. And uh, the point is that, uh, they, uh, you just, we just, you got to take a very solid, firm line on things at a, at a time like this, or otherwise, you know, the moment you start getting jittery and you know, and reflecting the, uh, you know, the, 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 the Freddy cats, mm -hmm. and then they all going to get afraid. They lose confidence in you. That's um, right. And uh, it doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we don't have a, a difficult time. We've got some of our hawks have been worrying. Uh, the, the doves are still worrying, and then the war has been going on a long time. But now. The whole thing's winding down in such a way that people are going to say, well, now look, what the hell is the fight arguing about? Is it going to be four months or six months? Exactly. Well, I, it, it clearly is a time to hold firm, and I think things are picking up. Lou Harris uh, called me yesterday, Yeah. and uh, they have completed their field survey, and uh, he did not have all the raw data in, but yeah. he said, he did have raw data, but it hadn't been processed. And yeah. He said there's one thing I'm convinced of, and that is that the president has picked up quite a bit, and I said, how much... Lou, and he said, well, he's, he's certainly up from the last time. He said, one indicator is that in response to the question, do you approve of the way the president handled the Kelly matter, uh, that the results on that were 55, 56 approval, and I think it was 37. I don't have the figures yeah. with me. I think it was 55 to 37. And he said, that's an indicator that... Uh, By his standards, that's... Uh, that's uh, you know, our own standards indicated far higher than that, but you know, that's the way he puts it, excellent, fair, and all that sort of thing. By the way he does it, that's damn good. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, did you did you you plugged into him, though, what our, what our ORC says on approval of the war. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. And he said that, uh, that that was consistent with what he was getting, an upswing. Uh, he, he hasn't told me how well, to the main thing is we don't care what he shows so much. Chuck is uh, basically if he shows uh, a shift upwards. That's the big, that's the important thing. If the, uh, if the trend is up with all the other good things that we know are coming along, uh, mm -hmm. that's what's really important. And also, we know what our own polls show on there, and we know they're right, because the ORC is, we don't load them at all, we just lay it in there.
right now, if we can keep, say, a brook in line and get Saxby, uh, that would make a very major break. Well, I think we got Saxby, I think, for a while at least. I, oh, absolutely. I think he came back uh, yeah. convinced. I think, he, yeah, I think the facts were pretty, they're pretty overwhelming when you go look at them. Yes, sir. Oh, I think if the facts be stays in line, I think Percy, uh, even though you never can trust the yeah. son of a gun, uh, he's got more reason to want to stay in line with the political situation he has in Illinois. He needs the money. And he needs the money. Uh, and you get Brooke quiet, which I think we can do with careful work. Uh, you really don't have too many of our people out on the fringe. Well, you basically have Javits and Case and uh, Matthias, that kind of people. Right? Schweiker. And Schweiker, yeah. yeah. And that's about it. Uh, they're, uh, they're, you can't do a hell of a lot with them, Chuck. Not a hell of a lot. No, I don't think we can. And Matthias is just, just weak, that's all. And uh, Javits, of course, is going to play his own little games. Case will play his games. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Schreiker, uh, I don't know what the hell makes him tick. I think he's weak, just like Matthias. He's like what Matthias is, isn't he? Yeah, Personality-wise, he's very much like it. I think this is sort of a... Uh, that's it. It's, it's, there's not, isn't a great deal of strength of character in either of those two fellows from what no. I've been able to see. No, unfortunately, there isn't. They're, they're nice fellows, but there's just no guts. Very nice fellows. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, that's not the issue. No, no guts. Mac, no. Mac may begin to come around a little bit with Glenn Bell uh, taking a good solid uh, line. That may tend to, every now and then, make Matthias a little more nervous, but... Uh, yeah. I think we're, uh, I think in all, in all in all that our, uh, our situation is probably about as, been as much. I'm glad we did exactly what we did this week. I think it was wise to do this for radio and not for television. I think we've had enough television for, I think next week, maybe not next week, but the week after next week, we can get it on television again. Would be time, yes, sir. But, uh, you know, people get, I think they get a little bit tired of seeing the man up there all the time. Well, Do you agree? Uh, I have mixed feelings about that, Mr. President. I, as you know, I, I was one of those who urged it. Uh, going on, I know. Going on. But uh, the reason is that uh, you do it so superbly. I watched the uh, videotape of the ASNE. And it, it, it's just magnificent. It would have it would have been great. But the question none of us can ever tell is when do people get tired of it? When do they, right. when do they want it? And uh, that's just. Well, they probably ran some of that AS&E in the in news show Saturday night, too, anyway. So. Oh, I saw it, I saw it uh, rerun several times, yes, sir. Of course, people do, people see it. And the argument about taking away a, a, a 
nine o'clock on a Friday night is a is a good argument. Yeah. I'm not doing it. And there will be another time. There will be another time. Well, it's the only uh, uh, the only thing that uh, the only way we really get the message to people. I'm concerned. When I do it, <laughs> and you do it, and it's uh, it's yeah. no other thing to say. But I just uh, we we fight and we fight and we we make a little ground here and lose a little here. But when you go on, that's it. It just never fails to uh, yeah. to get our at least get our people. Uh, well, well, even if we don't make converts, well, it, once uh, a month. Yeah. That's right. And, and well, this thing Friday, though, Chuck, I think I think it probably either from those who heard or read or saw a little on television, it may have reached thirty, forty percent of the people in, in, in a pretty positive way. Well, there were two two areas you discussed, Mr. President, that uh, you just you just scored a home run, the Kelly. The Kelly question, uh, I thought you handled that beautifully, and and uh, I, I think if if there was public approval before, there's even more now because you you put it all in perspective, which it hadn't been put in very well, uh, and the and the economy, the economy answers were were marvelous, uh, which uh, both of both of those are are things that uh, we want to strengthen. Yeah. We want to strengthen exactly. The economy issue, particularly. Right. Well, we'll come on with more of that later. Conley, Conley, of course, is very effective there. We're going to get him out a little more. Well, I mean, he's out a lot, but I mean, we can't. Uh, we may have to get him a big forum one time. Just let him. Well, he's he's what we've needed in terms of a good yeah. economic spokesman. God, we just haven't had one. But uh, you know, when you come down to it, you know, all of our other people is are just they're good, but they're bland. Mm -hmm. I mean, that isn't what they say. They just don't say it strong enough. Well, McCracken is actually kind of a negative when he does. Yeah, that. his his stuff is it, it is so so reasoned and cautious, and well, the other way, on the other hand, that he would be it's best that he not do it. Schultz is good, he's solid, mm -hmm. but not colorful. No, Conley's got color. Conley gets up there and he bangs it out there as if he believes it. You know, he's, he's great at that. Yeah. Well, we'll find. I think we do have a couple of forums that we've been talking about for Conley on the economy and. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're we're going to start to try to do this on a, on a very regular basis as some of the, the better figures. Well, just be sure they're tele televised. Uh, we, I think too that I think we ought to get Rogers out a little on more on the on the Vietnam thing. What do you think? He's very good. I mean, with P on these things. So he, when it's when it's something he's uh, warmed up to, he's very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When he gets defensive, he's terrible. And, uh, defensive. Huh? Defensive. Yeah. Which he sometimes does. But if he if he uh, what do you mean defensive? What do you mean like when they pin him? They, what, what do you, do you mean? mean what, does, him? what does he do then? Well, he he doesn't come through very strongly uh, when he's when he's being pressed hard. Uh, hmm. But given a forearm of his own, he's uh, yeah. very effective. Yeah, we'll find one. Uh, he did that too. when he spoke to the VFW. Hmm. It was uh, right after the revolution yeah. mm -hmm. exercise. God, he was just tremendous. Uh, mm -hmm. Because he did it with a lot of feeling, and he, mm -hmm. he projected very well. When he got into a press conference, he tends to. Yeah, well, we'll, to, we'll try him, try him again, maybe him on, on a forum where he's. Uh, oh. Well, I've got a. Of course, he's gone. I think for uh, maybe back Monday, and then he goes again to Europe. So we. Oh boy. Yeah. We won't have him for a while, but uh, I think he's gone for two weeks when he goes this next time. He will be here, that's right. He'll be here this coming week, and then I think he goes uh, for two weeks after that, Mr. President. What about Laird? Uh, Laird is here, I think. Yeah, but how does he come over, in your opinion? Uh, I, I, I don't like to be critical of people with you, I don't think. Not as effectively as he could. I, I, I wouldn't use him. I mean, I wouldn't rely on him uh, mm -hmm. uh, as a good spokesman, no. You see, that's the problem in the foreign policy field. Beyond Rogers and Laird, there's nobody they want to hear. That's right. Yeah, you know, that's the, the real, real problem we got. Well, I think the, uh, I think it is, but I think that uh, if if things happen the way we think they're going to happen, uh, that may be less of an issue in the next. Oh yes. Yeah. In the, yeah. And and it's kind of an issue now that uh, that Bill Rogers does handle well. If we if things are going well, he yeah, he's he's always. He's much better when things are going well. That's, right. That's, right. That's what I was trying to say before. Right. If you get right. him on something, he's not good. But if he's if, if he's on something for sure, running that you leave the the uh, this whole uh, China.
Cleaning business has sure got the duds in a dizzy, hasn't it? But they don't know how to do it. They know what the hell to do. They don't know how to react. Uh, they, don't, they don't want to. They, uh, they, 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 they don't want to react positively, but they don't know what the hell to do. Well, the timing of it was, uh, was just masterful. The way it, uh, the way it turned out. The way it turned out. Yeah. It was a, it was a marvelous break. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course, the main thing there is that, uh, that we mustn't get their hopes up too high because we, it's going to cool off now some. I mean, I mean nothing's going to happen in China. It's going to be a very slow process. So that's why I played it very down the middle. I just say, now look here, this is important, but let's not uh, go running around and thinking that tomorrow I'll, we're going to have great relations with China. It's going to be a hell of a long time. I think if you moved too fast, Mr. President, you'd get uh, our constituents on head. Well, you'd get the right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's you, right. you, that's right. you've gone just as far as you that's need right. to go. That's right. Confuse the stir up the does. That's right. But I, I, I've been amazed that... Uh, but they've been as quiet as they have. And the main thing is that we're still sickened by Taiwan, you see. That's right. And we uh, will do that. Well, anyway, we shall see. We, this, uh, uh, the, uh, we got Frazier in the day. He was fine. He stood in line with us. Shook heads. He's a fine guy. Joe Frazier. He, uh, he apparently is... Uh, strong. all the reports we get, he's uh, sympathetic to you. Well... Whether he certainly is good with young people. I mean, he's very young blacks. He says, "Look, you gotta gotta work, kids." Well, I, that's why we had him. We uh, we have Sammy Davis who's uh, yeah. smelling around. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We we'll yeah. wait just a little while, and then we'll do it. <laughs> if we if we pick up a few fellows like that, uh, yeah. it, it has quite an effect. Okay, fine, Mr. Yeah. President.